I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril. You know, rice has been feeding people for 5,000 years, but this Asian grain didn't put down roots in Europe till the 1400s. There are now about 8,000 varieties being served on both sides of the Atlantic. And one of the most popular these days is arboreal rice, the short grain rice used to make risotto. So today, I'm going to spend the entire show on this little rice, which means risotto. Well, I got it on the menus, and I'll tell you, I got a hot skillet right here. I've got some chicken stock simmering away on the stove. Actually, when you make risotto, particularly at home, risotto is sort of the labor of love because one of the proper ways to cook risotto is you got to stir it. You got to keep stirring and stirring and stirring, retaining, and keep adding a little stock. Evaporation happens, stirring and stirring. It's labor of love. So I'm going to share with you, but also show you how simple this labor of love is. I'm going to cut a little bit of onion. I should say a little more onion. Let me show you something. This is regular long grain rice. Like that grows and grows and grows in Louisiana. You see this right here? I want to show you. Now, this is arboreal rice right here. You see? You see how shorter it is? Arboreal rice. Woo! Risotto. Now, we're going to begin in our skillet with a little bit of olive oil. And then, you need one of these guys. You've got to have a wooden spoon to do some stirring. So we've got a wooden spoon. We've got our skillet, a little pot. We're going to put that on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of onion. A little more onion. And then a little salt. And just for about a minute or two, just extracting some of the flavors out. And then we're going to add our risotto. And here's where it comes the labor of love begins. Once you just cook it about 30 seconds like that, you're going to take some stock. And you're going to start stirring it. Now the first minute or two, you can get by. So if you're going to have to take a little break, you want to do so right now. That's right, because the labor of love begins. You got to stir the risotto. And actually, 21 is a good number. 21. That's the tip for today. About 21 minutes, usually, it takes to make a perfect risotto. Well, maybe 22 minutes. Now, one of the tricks in stirring up the risotto is as it starts releasing its starch, or it's sort of like a little natural cream in there in the rice, and you keep stirring, you're going to have to add slowly a little bit more stock to it. And then you keep stirring away. And the perfect risotto is when there is not any liquid left, and you've got this really moist, almost wet sort of risotto. Now let's talk about risotto for a minute while I'm stirring this, because you can add shrimp. You could add salmon. You could add herbs like dill, like basil. 
A lot of times, like we do with emeralds, we could add truffles, a little truffle oil. Well, I'm going to show you that because truffle and truffle oil are one of my favorite risottos. How about wild mushrooms? You could add beef. You could add all kinds of scallops and artichokes, all sorts of risottos. Now, let me show you back here. You see how, you see how the moisture is evaporating? You see that? Now, you can check. You see how it's the natural starch? You can check a grain, but it's still crunchy. And you're not going to have enough liquid in there. So you've got to add a little more liquid. And you keep stirring and stirring the labor of love. And speaking about labor of love, while I keep stirring, you take a break. Don't go away because when we come back, I'm going to finish this risotto and show you just how delicious it is. Stay with me on the essence of Ember. Let's check and see if it's time to add a little bit more stock. And this is a good time as you're stirring this labor of love. Hey, if you're just joining us, we're making risotto. That's right, and you always want to make sure that the liquid is completely, completely absorbed before you add more. So let's check it. You just, oh, it's still a little crunchy. I haven't gone anywhere, just been stirring around. But you know what? It's almost time to finish this risotto. And I'm also going to show you a few little tricks of mine, at least for my perfect risotto. I'm sure everybody has their own version, their perfect risotto. But I'm going to show you mine. Look, you see how it's starting to get really starchy? You don't want it to stick. It will burn. And that's why we keep stirring this. But you can also see that it's just not going to be enough liquid right now. And that's when you add a little bit more liquid into it. And let it keep cooking. And keep stirring away, because it will stick on you. And then it will burn, and you're going to have burnt risotto, uh, risotto. Now, you know, I've been thinking about, when we went away on the break, I've been saying, hmm, well, should I do shrimp, or maybe I should do salmon? What kind of risotto should I do? I'm going to add a little bit more liquid. Keep stirring it away. Well, I decided that I'm going to just do one of my old standby favorites. I mean, I'm going to show you the little trick about how to finish it and make it just even more delicious, but. I decided to do a little wild mushroom and truffle risotto. Oh well, what can I say? Now, I'm going to take this off for one second. I want to show you. You see how it's very starchy? It's really starchy. We haven't added anything to this other than stock and a little onion and oil, of course. Now let's, let's see if it's close. Still a little, little bit crunchy, or al dente, but it's getting near perfection. Now watch this. Before we put it back on, you see this? It's getting really, really close, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I've got some wild mushrooms. I'm going to add some wild mushrooms. You add as much as you like, okay? Now we're going to put it back on the stove. Now, the mushrooms are going to also absorb some flavor. So we're going to need to add a little bit more liquid. A little bit more liquid, and you've got to keep stirring it now. And also, 
I'm going to add a little bit of truffle oil. Tatufu, huh? Add a little truffle oil. Mm. Now I'm going to add a little bit of fresh grated pepper. How's it smelling here, guys? Good, huh? And keep stirring it away. I want to show you this stage here. Very important. It's the labor of love. It's risotto. You got to keep stirring it. You see? You see the consistency now? Well, I can tell you the texture is just about there. Mm hmm. Put it back on. We got to keep stirring it. Hey, it's worth it. 21, 22 minutes out of your life. Hey, you get the perfect risotto. You want that liquid to be absorbed. And this is when it's probably the most important time to keep stirring. Oh, I smell the essence of truffle in the air. Woo! Now, let me show you my finishing touch. Little finishing touches for the perfect risotto. I'm going to show you. Watch. You got to keep stirring it. You see, I took it off the heat again. I want to show you the steps. Now, let me show you a little bit of little tip from Emerald here. I'm going to add a little bit of chive, just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of parsley, just a little bit. Now, here's, here's the tip. Here's the tip. Right before it's finished, I add a little bit of cream. A little bit of cream. You can see not only the natural starch, but you see how creamy it's looking now. Then you want to add about one or two, depending, about a tablespoon of butter. About a tablespoon of butter. And then you put it back on. You start working in, working in. You see how creamy it looks now? You see that? Oh, boy. Whoo. I'll tell you what. When it's worked in, we spoon up a little risotto. Okay. Just a little bit of garnish. And then I'm just going to finish it with just a little drizzle, just a little drizzle of truffle oil. And there is the perfect risotto. And hey, if you got some left over, you better stay on and watch because I'm going to show you when I come back what to do with your leftover risotto, but there won't be any of this left. Stay with me. I'll be right back. was uh, some pretty good risotto. Welcome back. Hey, you know if you have some risotto left over, or you could always make a little extra, great tip for you. Don't throw it away. You put that leftover risotto in the ice box, just like we got here. But let me show you what you can do. You take some of that risotto, and you jazz it up a little bit. We'll take some risotto. Hey, maybe you want to add a little bit of sage. This is just some chopped up mozzarella. Mmm. Now watch this. I had some shrimp, a little prosciutto ham. Ah, let's add all the prosciutto. A little bit of shrimp. Now watch this.
We'll mix this up. Now, actually the starch in this thing should be able to just bind this just fine. If not, if it's too wet, you could add either a little flour or you could add a little bit of breadcrumb. If it's not wet and if it's too dry, then you could add an egg. Just like you're going to make a little meatloaf or a turkey loaf or a vegetable loaf, we'll just make some risotto cakes. Now you see, it's a little wet, that's okay. Add a little bit of breadcrumb or a little bit of flour. And that's what you can do with your leftover risotto, if there's any left. Because you know, right here on the essence, you saw mine, it's gone. Delicious. Well, let's go on from here. What you do is get a little hot skillet, put some olive oil. Then what you can do is bring over your cakes. And you can either just sort of form them with your hand or even the spoon. You see that? Now, get your cakes. And you just pat it down. Oh, maybe we're going to do a little seasoning right there. And then you take those cakes, turn them over. See that? And you just keep patting them down a little bit. So now you may be saying to yourself, well, I got leftover risotto. You can see I added a little prosciutto, a little shrimp. Hey, add what you like. Add some salami. Add some fish to it. Smoked salmon. Be creative. Have fun. But a good way to utilize it, you make these little risotto cakes, just like I'm doing right here. And you brown them on one side and pat them down. Brown them on the other side. You don't need to cook it that much. It's already cooked. Now, look at that. Does that look good? Well, I'll tell you, it's going to look even better. Because what I did is that I took a little bit of basil. I took a little bit of thyme. I took a little bit of sage with some olive oil, and I put it just inside the food processor a little bit, kind of like an eggless pesto. Then, it's just olive oil, basil. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my risotto cake, Just like that. And then, just give it a little drizzle like that. And then, we're just going to jazz it up just a little, little bit. A little bit of green onion. I got some parsley here. We can do that. And a perfect way to use up those risotto cakes and that leftover risotto you can be as creative as you want remember the best risotto is made with lots of love 
I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow for the essence of Emerald. Bye, guys.